the gaudiest, the most violent, the lonesomest mile in the world. Broadway's My Beat with Larry Thor as Detective Danny Clover. In the soft night of June, Broadway's heart beats fast. The girls clothed in summer wear the glow of neon in their hair, on their lips. And the glitter of the spectacular winds their throats with the quick jewels of night. Their perfumed walk, which mixes well with Broadway's own exotic odors, the seared electricity, the air, cool, washed, scented by installment plan air conditioning system, the mist of steam rising from manhole covers. Broadway follows close on the heels of the soft night because somewhere the night turns a corner and vanishes. And in your hands are its gifts of emptiness and shock. To me, they were given on the fourth floor landing of a tenement near the river. The emptiness, the silence after terror's shriek. The shock, the girl with her beauty strangled out of her. The blood from her knife wounds finding the cracks in the wooden floor, glinting in the sallow light of the ten-watt bulb. And the man lets you take it all in, touches your arm, and brings you back. Francesca Brown, Danny, waitress at Harper's Grill. Strangled, knife. Mm. With this, gold pen knife. Fancy. A corkscrew, bottle opener, nail file, and no prints. Wiped clean. You'll trace it, I'm not going to... Oh, I got the description. Here, you take it. Her husband's inside, Danny, in their room. I think maybe you ought to talk to him. All right. You're a different one, aren't you? Uh Uh-huh. Mind if I turn on the light? Go ahead. I turned it off before because it's all the same. One good thing, though, it saves on the electric bill. You're... That's right. Blind. Stare at blind Jimmy all you want, mister. You don't get hurt. Not anymore. The girl out there, your wife. I have to tell you about her. I have to tell you about Francesca. Married me in Italy. In Naples. Came to the army hospital with a priest. Said she wanted me, even like this. Francesca led me around sunny Naples, showing it to me. Letting me touch it. And I brought her home. To this. You feel like telling me now we could wait. Why would I need to wait? She worked late tonight, overtime at Harper's Grill. I waited up for her. I can't sleep and she... I waited up for her and heard her steps with a man. They stopped in front of our door and she was going to scream. How did you know that? Are you kidding? I'm blind. That way I knew all there was to know about Francesca. She taught me. She... Well, what did you do then? I went to help her. Me. All I got was the feel of a guy standing with Francesca dead in his hands. Nothing else? Yeah, something else. He threw her at me. Said, she's all yours, blind boy. He laughed when he said it. Mm. He was still laughing when he ran away. We'll do what we can, Jimmy. We'll... Sure you will. You'll let me hear Francesca's steps on the stairs again. <laughs> we'll do what we can. Muglin. You talk to him, huh, Danny? You... Yeah. I'll take care of him, Muglin. Do whatever's got to be done. I happened to look down the stairwell, four flights down, and on each landing, the people looking upward at death. Death was on the fourth floor, and that was a blessing for the first, second, and third. And then one landing down, a kid in a paper hat released a paper airplane. For an instant, it held in the air, then darted downward. A little later, when I got to the ground floor, it was crushed and stained with tobacco juice. I walked out into the street. Harper's Grill was within walking distance, a second-rate addition to a second-rate hotel, a place catering to loneliness and a not-too-finicky appetite 24 hours a day. I went in, sat down at the table. A girl in a blue uniform came over, put a water glass in front of me, poured. You want to look at the menu? Thanks, not now. I I want to talk to you. Police. Hmm? What for? What did I do? There's nothing to be frightened of. Sit down. Why don't you tell me what's the matter? Sit down. My name's Rose. Rose Keeter. I'm Danny Clover. How long have you been working here tonight? Came on at 7 last night. I'm off at 7 this morning. Pretty long hours, huh? Mm-hmm. I'm on account of the convention at the hotel. Oh? Uh, 
Cane and Ale Club, something like that. Boys with the canes have been coming here like flies. That's why I'm working overtime. Did you know a waitress named Francesca Brown? Lucky her. She got off a little over an hour ago. Refused to work overtime. I should have done that. She's dead. What? Dead. Strangled. Knifed. Hey, now, wait a minute. I, I got some... Take it easy. Do you mean it? She's dead? Bert? Bert. What do you mean? Bert Finley. What about him? You said she was strangled, didn't you? You, you, you said... Who's Bert Finley? The guy who hung around her, asked for dates. Got nasty. You know, winks with the blue place. He wasn't kidding. Was he here tonight? Sure he was. He waited for Francesca when she got off. He's a caner, too. A what? Caner. I call him caner. The boys from the caner nail club. This week they got a penalty if they don't carry a cane. This week they come from all over with canes. Grown men. Where do I find Bird? I don't know. He lives close. That's all I know. Thanks, Rose. Thanks a lot. Wait a minute. She's really dead? Dead? Strangled? And leave the girl trying to wipe off the terror I had spilled on her table. And go home and try to sleep against the image of a sightless boy sitting in a darkened room, remembering, counting the touch of the woman who lay in death on his threshold. And wait for the morning so you can go back to headquarters and slot it out in routine. And not making it, not even when the uniformed officer comes up with Bert Finley's address. Not even Bert Finley, who offers to clear off the kitchen table and make you a cup of instant coffee. My wife had known I was going to have a visitor. She'd have left a whole pot of coffee. It's all right, Mr. Finley. I don't want any. Well, maybe it's a good thing she's not here, though. I'd have a heck of a time explaining to her what I'm doing with a policeman in our flat. The missus is very choicy about the friends I keep. How about, about girls like Francesca Brown, for instance? Franny, a waitress in a grease pan, a hash slinger. What's the matter? Is she getting high and mighty? I passed a few typical remarks, like you passed a hash slinger. She's dead. Murdered. Dead? That way. What you come to be for? Doesn't it always happen to girls like her? The looks they give you, the way they bend over the table close, the way they walk away from you. You ask me, I'll tell you. It doesn't always happen that way. Not to women like Francesca. What makes her so special? You thought she was. You just told me. That doesn't make me want to kill her. That makes it quite the opposite. That makes you... you saw Francesca last night. Waited till she got off. You took her home, Bert. Well, that's a lie. Who told you a dirty lie like that? You take her home, Bert? You listen to me. I'm a good guy. Respected. My wife, my classmates, class of 36. Last year, they even made me prexy of the Cane and Nail Society. You take Francesca home, Bert? Well, I tried to. Or I tried. I was showing off to my friend, Cane and Nail Buddy. Tried to impress him how I was... Like that with Franny. When I didn't make it, he laughed. Helped me into a cab, sent me home. Helped you? I needed it. I'd had more ale than cane. Your laughing friend, who is he? Harry Bruno, staying at the Acme Hotel. You go ask him. He'll tell you how I came right home. Ask him. I will. Is this your penknife, Bert? Why'd you get it? It's the one that stabbed Francesca. And you think I... You're crazy. I lost it. This morning, the missus asked me for it to open a cannon. I, I looked for it, and I, I lost it. Well, that's the night the cane and nailers gave me in gratitude for my term of office. Prexy, I told you, I... Sure, sure, you're respected, you told me. Grab your cane, Bert. At headquarters, we, too, respect men with canes. <laughs> Can you come back later, fella? Police. Danny Clover. Can't come back, huh? <laughs> come on in. In the middle of a shave here, fella. Go right ahead. Oh, it's that important, huh? I think so. Go right ahead, Mr. Bruno. Shave. Mm-hmm. What's on your mind, fella? You know Bert Finley? Are you kidding? Bert? <laughs> My classmate at the university. You're a university man, huh? Three years of it. Broke my shoulder one summer so they wouldn't renew my scholarship. Yeah, waste of time. Anyhow, who needs college? Color wears. You belong to the Cane and Ale Club, don't you? Yeah, yeah, I belong. <laughs> what do you think I'm here for? What do you think I came all the way from Kansas City for? You carry a cane and drink ale? Close, huh? Great city, great rise. Gotta get me some back in Kansas City. Hey, 
What? I didn't say anything. I'm waiting for you. Oh, hold it a second. Let me have this face perfume. Uh, what about perfume? He said he had you look at a waitress last night. Oh. Well, acquaint me with the laws of New York City, fellow. No looking at waitresses, huh? Okay, I won't look. Hand me that talcum powder like a good fellow. Waitress named Francesca. Francesca Brown. Neat. She can carry my tray any time. She was stabbed last night with this pocket knife. Did you ever see her? What is Bert going to that for? What about the knife? Bert's. We gave it to him a couple days ago. Outgoing Prexy of the class of 36, cane and ale. Stabbed it. He says he didn't. I believe it. Did you see Francesca after she left work last night? Hello, waitress. I didn't say you followed her. Did you make a date with her? <laughs> Not this fella. Oh, I admit it, fella. I reached down for her hand, got my fingers wet in the chicken noodle soup. She knew the defense of that girl. Where did you go after you left Finley? Up to Harlem. You know, sightseeing. Yeah, now. Yeah. Let's go down to headquarters, Mr. Bruno. I want you to meet somebody. Sure, whatever you say, fella. Hand me my shirt, will you? How long are we going to wait in this office, fella? Till I tell you you can go, fella. Look, Mr. Clover, Harry's got no family here. I have. The missus is going to worry. So what's with those canes you boys are carrying? What's with them, Danny? Explain it to Tartaglia, Muggerman. I'll be right back. Okay, Danny. What's with the canes at the Cannon Ale Society, Jim? We're ready for you, Jimmy. You don't have to take my arm, Mr. Clover. I'll be all right. This is the door over here. Uh, you're all right now, Jim. Here. You sit down. Last night when your wife was killed, Jimmy, the man who did it said to you, she's all yours, blind... He said, she's all yours, blind boy. There are four men in this room besides us, Jimmy. They're each going to say that sentence. I want you to listen, consider, and tell me if you recognize his voice. You. You say it. She's... She's all... She say it. She's all yours, blind boy. Now you... She's all yours, blind boy. You. She's all yours, blind boy. You. She's all yours, blind boy. Well, Jimmy. The third one. Let me hear him again. You. She's all yours, blind boy. Again, Jimmy? Well, none of them. None of these men killed my wife. You're positive? I'm positive. Keep after him, Mr. Fuller. Broadway's My Beat, written by Morton Fine and David Friedkin, with Larry Thor as Detective Danny Clover. There's a stir on Broadway when summer starts coming in. The visitors arrive, and Broadway is festooned with latest style from Peoria, the bumper crop of girlies from Iowa. The kid who got tossed off the boxcar at Scranton and hitchhiked the rest of the way. This is the time. This is the promise. This is the dream. And it's precisely the instant when the citizens of Broadway put in for their vacation to Scranton, Peoria, and Iowa. And it takes the bus tickets and the two whole weeks holiday to find out your road to an empty corner of a faraway world. With me, it was still routine. Murder is never seasonal. A girl had been knifed and thrown back at her husband. Find out why and who and what circumstances conspired to want her dead. My job. And at police headquarters at night, a man. His name was Sergeant Gino Tartaglia. Many people thought him the friendly type. What do you think of me, Danny? What's the matter, Gino? Go ahead, Danny. Let me have it. Both barrels. I stand arms akimbo and wait for it. Between the eyes, Danny. What happened? What brings this on? 
This morning, Danny, on my way to work, I stopped into Zimmerman's the baker, as is my wont, to purchase my daily Zimmerman bums. And? Mr. Zimmerman walked over and said, stop pinching the Zimmerman bums, and proceeded to tell me what he thought. Then, he heaved the Zimmerman bum at me. That's why my uniform's forced it all over. Gino. I'm not a bad chap, am I not, Danny? Gino, you're kind, trustworthy, loyal, obedient. Would you give me a note to Zimmerman to that effect, Danny? Soon, after we attend to the business at hand. Her business is bad, Danny. There's not much to hand. Only the fact that the members, 500 strong, of the Cane and Ale Club are raising hob among the populace with their antics with Cane and Ale. Such goings on, that's... Sh- Over speaking. Get your hat, Danny. What's the trouble, Muggerman? That waitress at Harper's Grill, Rose Keeler. What happened to her? Beaten, knifed, emergency hospital, Danny. Squat car downstairs. <laughs> Nobody get out with you, Rose. I talked to you before, Rose. Danny Clover, remember? I'm a good patient. I don't ask for nobody when I don't need them. I don't need you. I need you. I'll push the night buses for you. You want us to find the man who hurt you, don't you, Rose? I don't want to talk about it. I know how you feel, but you've got to try. You've got to help us. Mm. You, you don't have to get up. I know, I know. I watch your face. I want to see how a man looks when he gets a good look at what another man did to me. See? See? You had a knife? Wasn't his fingernails. You finished looking. Yeah, you finished. Who was he, Rose? So you can compare notes. Who was he? Oh, um, can I help you? Because in the dark alley, I heard a cane tapping. And a voice asked a question in a whisper. For an answer, I tried to scream. Funny, no screen came out. What were you doing there? It's a shortcut on my way to work. I don't ever hardly take it except when I'm late. You live near Harper's Grill? Yeah. Yeah, maybe too near. Why do you say that? Guys find out I live near want to walk me home. Too cheap for cab fare. Like who? Bert Finner used to. Before Francesca came to work. Kane and Ailers, they all been asking. Bert suggested, they say. You think it was Finley? I don't think, Mister. I just heard. Was it Finley? I don't know. I just heard. I'm in the night, brother, Mister. Now I need somebody. In a few moments, a door opened noiselessly. The sister, in a white nun's habit, leaned over the girl in the bed, put a hand against the girl's forehead. Then the sister turned to me and smiled faintly. She told me Rose was sleeping. That was good. I left. And another scrap of information. Bert Finley had also made a play for Rose Keeler. Bert Finley, ex-Prexy of the Cane and Ale Boys, was quite a boy. Go now to the home of the ex-Prexy and ask him what else he was. The door was open. Oh, I thought it was my husband. I'm from the police. Bert hasn't been up to any mischief, has he? So may I come in? What is it you wish? Where's your husband? Well, he'll be home soon. He'll be home at 12. Just about half past that now. Oh, it certainly is not. Bert is always home by midnight, always. Not tonight, Mrs. Finley. Where is he? Well, he's former Plexi, you know, of the Cane and Ale Club. They're in town, 33 Lodges. Why is he home? I said 12 o'clock. Nobody gets into mischief if they're in bed at midnight. It's important that we find your husband, Mrs. Finley. Do you have any idea where he might be? Well, I know exactly where he is. What do you think of that? I think that's very nice. You think I have a dad about for a husband? Burke University, you know, last year's president of his society. He's with the boys now, is that right, Mrs. Finley? At a banquet, his lodge, the one of the class of 36. Where's the banquet? Well, I... I, I, I don't know. I don't know Bert never told me. Hey, Danny. Muggerman. Quick, Danny. Get in. What's the trouble? Bert Finley stabbed. Alley back of Harper's Grill. Let's go, Muggerman. Get 
out of here, kid. Yeah, get up. And there he is, mister. Same place he was at when I found him. The dead don't get around much, do they? How come you found him, Mr. Harper? I'll tell you about that. I was closing up the grill, understand? Lots of things to do when you close up. You gotta check the shortages on your waitresses. You, you'd be surprised how they try to cut you sometime, understand? All the lieutenant wants to know is how come you found him. I was coming to that, mister. You want to force me? Closing the grill tonight was somewhat a chore. Them Cain and Ailers had a banquet. Good old boys arranged it. My favorite customer. I'm... The Cain and Ailers kept walking in and out through my kitchen into the alley. I don't serve liquor, understand? Then back through again, messed up everything. Bert Friendly, one of those that came through? Must have. Because how come he bleeding here all over my alley? He didn't come back, so you weren't looking for him. You the type that keeps pressing, aren't you, son? No, I didn't go looking for Boyd. I happened to notice him here while I was emptying the day's garbage. First, I thought it was one of my alley clients falling asleep, waiting for a charity. Then I saw it was it was good old boy, dead in the jewelry. Take care of it, Margaret. I'm going back into the grill. You come too, huh, Harper? I understand you. You want me along while you go clue hunting. Ain't no time a man's lonesomer than when he's out hunting alone. Come on in, mister. I'll be your friend. This is my kitchen. Want to nose around it a while? Make your hot sandwich if you want, meantime. Banquet table. Which one was it? That'll be out in the mess hall where it all is. Hmm? Come on, I'll show you. Ain't had a good chance to clean it all off yet. I do that myself. Don't like overtime on my hands if I can help it. You understand? You got your nose in the wind, boy. What you smell? That cane leaning against the wall, the table near the door. Don't surprise me. I'm one of them Cain and Ailers forgot his cane. They forgot their manners. They forgot... Hey, that cane's why? That's a blind man's cane. Good old Ned back home had one just like it. You remember a blind man in your grill? Son, I was back in the kitchen going crazy. I didn't look for no blind... How come a blind man forgets his cane? That's like... Pay your respects, Harper. They're taking old Bert away. <laughs> Not only blind, it's, it's gone to his head. He killed my wife. He killed Francesca. I know, I know. Take it easy, Jimmy. I don't care about the man he killed in the alley, but he killed Francesca. See? What did I tell you? Crazy. Ah, get him off of me! Let him go! Get him off. Let him go! Ah. Ah. Jimmy, your wife is dead. I'm sorry for that. You're blind. I'm sorry for that, too. But you cost a man his life. That man? Finley? What's that to me? He said, take it easy, Jimmy. That's better. You're a killer, Bruno. Huh? You gone crazy, too? I'm going to get out of here. Yeah, do that. I want you to try. Uh, Go ahead. Try. You won't let me kill him? You kill him. Shoot him. Kill him. We had Bruno at headquarters earlier. We gave him to you, but you wouldn't identify his voice. Why? I wanted him for myself. So you let him go, and he kills again. What do you got on me? The, the word of a blind That's man. That's right. The word of a beaten girl. A girl who heard a cane tapping before she was mugged. I got 500 buddies with cane. But nobody like Bert Fenley. A man who knew you stole his knife while he was drunk, while you put him in a cab. I stood out in the alley and listened to him kill Bert Fenley. Bert screamed. Francesca did. Bert showed you, Francesca. So you followed her home, Bruno. Tried to talk nice to her, then strangled her, knifed her. Bert showed you Rose. You did the same thing. Listen to me. I he did it. You... I heard his voice again at police headquarters. Found out about the banquet at Harper's and I went there. I spotted his voice again. I followed his voice. Followed him out in the alley. When he finished with Finley, I followed him here. Nobody followed me. You're blind. I heard your cane. Finley didn't have a cane. I, I left it at Harper's. 
You did. You're a cane and ailer. You had a cane. Jimmy followed your cane. Smart. Blind boy, smart. That what made you big with your wife, blind boy? Face it, fella. She felt sorry for you. You think she could love a guy like you without eyes? Listen to him. Listen to him. How long was it since you got a good look at your wife? Saw what she was, what she could be to a man. What was she to you? Somebody to lead you around so you wouldn't be hit by a cab? I'm the kind of a guy who could have had her. You can't see, fella. You can't see like us. If they allow witnesses, Mr. Clover. I want to be there when he dies. <laughs> Broadway's My Beat stars Larry Thor as Detective Danny Clover, with Charles Calvert as Tartaglia and Jack Crucian as Mugovan. The program was produced and directed by Elliot Lewis, with musical score composed and conducted by Alexander Courage. In tonight's story, Lamont Johnston was heard as Jimmy Brown, Lou Merrill as Harry Bruno, Kathy Lewis as Rose Keller, Herb Butterfield as Bert Finley, and B. Benaderet as Mrs. Finley. Beat has come to you through the worldwide facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service. Tonight on FBN Presents, you've been listening to some of the best in radio drama with Fibber McGee and Molly and Broadway is my beat. Join us again Monday evening at the same time, 9.05, when FBN presents Dragnet and Escape.